Hey guys, this is Mark Goldberg with Mark Vlogs Watches, and today I have an episode that I've been wanting to do for a long time. Your watch horror stories. My watch horror stories. Now, anybody who has ever been into collecting knows there is some sort of very painful, obsessive compulsive disorder relationship between a dude and his watch collection. And we can often make mistakes that are painful and that, 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 that leave little mental scars on us. Okay, all in good fun. But nonetheless, today we are going to talk about yours and my biggest watch regrets, our biggest watch horror stories. But before we get into that, let's have some fun and let me give you the quick fist watch check. And here it is. Today, guys, I am wearing the Zin 105. I've come to the conclusion that this is my daily beater, and I nearly had a watch horror story of my own because I came very close to selling this watch. I just got kind of a little bored with the simplicity of it, and then all of a sudden, I started craving simplicity, and here she was. So I'm gonna, I'll make you um, a video on why the Zin 104 is the perfect daily wear watch. But, guys, I have, a bunch of letters, okay? I put um, a call to action on the community tab of my channel, and I asked the, the fellows, the subscribers, to tell me your terrible watch horror stories, your biggest regrets, your worst oopses, and um, yeah, we're gonna talk about those right now. But I guess, I guess really I should go first. And you know, watch regrets, watch horror stories, they fall into a lot of categories. Some of them are damage, you know, how, you know, how you dropped a watch or did something bad to it. Um, other watch horror stories fall more into the, I sold something that I regret and either I rebought it or it's one of a kind or difficult to get or it got too expensive and now I can't rebuy it. So, you know, the unfortunate parting with something that you later decided that you loved. It's like breaking up with your girlfriend and insulting her on the way out, out the door, you know, and then a month later you miss her and you want her back, but you, you know, it's broken. You can't have her back, guys. So sometimes we can't relive the past. So it falls into that, like sort of like looking back regrets. And then there are a lot of financial regrets. And I gotta say, probably my biggest watch mistake fell into the category of what I would call now a financial watch regret. <laughs> I'm gonna drop a picture of the culprit in right here. So you've had a good look at my Steel Daytona, and you know what? I didn't like it. I just didn't like it. Who sells, a, <laughs> guys, this makes me feel bad to tell you, but who sells a Steel Daytona for a loss? I, and you know, I don't know that I actually ever, you know, admitted to this on camera before, but I sold that watch for $2,000 less than I paid. And when I give you the numbers, you're gonna wanna, well, you don't, I, I wanna smack myself, okay? I'm gonna save you the trouble because I paid $10,000 for it, which at the time it was a, seemed like a lot of money and it, it was a lot of money for me. $10,000 for a watch. And I sold it for $8,000. <laughs> and now it's worth so much more than even the 10 that I paid. So uh, actually the, that experience has made me a little bit leery of selling steel sports. And of course with steel sports Rolex in such a short supply now, I recommend you think really carefully before selling anything because with the shortage that we're experiencing right now and the slowdown due to the worldwide you know what, well, the prices of these things could start skyrocketing a lot more. So if you sell now, you might have a watch regret about this time next year. But enough about me. Let's talk about your biggest regrets. And here we go. The way I phrased this up, guys, by the way, was what was your biggest watch screw up? Tell me your stories about your biggest mistakes and regrets. And the first fella to answer me was Phil Tomlinson. Phil said, my biggest regret was buying an Omega Seamaster 300 when I really wanted a Submariner. Now I'm buying a Submariner and I'll take a loss on the Omega. A great watch though it is, it just didn't scratch the itch. So um, definitely there is the whole buying a filler watch, you know, buying a watch you didn't want. You buy a Tudor because you wanted a Rolex and you couldn't get the Rolex. I mean, Tudor is a great brand. If you buy a Tudor, get it because you wanted the Tudor. And I have an Omega Seamaster. It's a fantastic watch, but I think if I had bought it in lieu of a Submariner instead of an addition to, I'd be having the same regret that Phil does. So 
save up for what you really want. Don't settle. I think that's the, the moral of the story there, right, Phil? Oh, actually, Phil got some replies to that. Um, Oakley World said, Phil, you're not alone. <laughs> so he had the exact same situation and reaction. Phil came back and let us know that he picked up his Submariner and uh, in the meantime, and he sold the Omega onward and upwards, probably sold it for a loss. Jose in Luzon, which is in the Philippines, says, I allowed someone who I thought was a very close friend access to some of my watches briefly. My Explorer 2 disappeared when she left. Aha, uh -huh, the old honey trap. A corrupt local official interfered with, then stopped the investigation of the theft. I am told he is now wearing my, ro my stolen Rolex. So you can get into some trouble when you allow unknown people access to your watches. Guys, Rolex watches, uh, pr particularly, they're like cash. It's like carrying around cash. They're so easily pawnable, sellable, convertible um, that uh, you, you want to be very careful with them. Keep them in the safe and uh, don't lend them out and be careful where you wear them even. Okay, a fellow by the name of MMM. It's a lot of Roman numerals. Sorry, I don't know what this adds up to and I'm not going to figure it out. But he's given me three of his, <laughs> his biggest watch regrets. Number one, buying a Speedmaster from an AD with 20% off, still too high, and then selling it for half the price I paid. So um, depending on which Speedmaster it was and which box, a lot of them got dumped onto the gray market and um, Joma Shop was selling them for way under retail for a long time. So yeah, if you had to dump out of a Speedmaster that you didn't buy well, you would get killed. And, um, and our friend with the Roman numerals, yeah, he lost half his money on that watch. You know, honestly, if I were him, I would have kept it. I don't think I would take a 50% loss on a watch. What about you guys? Tell me in the comments. His number two issue was buying a 116710LN for $6,000 when I had the chance. Oh, not buying it. That is a, uh, that, that, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that is the discontinued ceramic GMT. And he could buy it for six. Well, gosh, now they're like, what, 12, 13, 14? because they got discontinued. Turning down numerous Batman from my AD before it was discontinued. Ooh, that is a, a rough one, because I think those retailed for around $8,700 at the time, and now they're like 14, 15, 16,000, and he turned down numerous opportunities. Now, my next comment comes from a fantastic guy, a, a name and a channel you all know well. His name is Bruce Williams. Bruce, thank you for fessing up to this one. Bruce says, my biggest watch horror story involves a Rolex, a car, and a highway, LOL. Bruce, I'm glad to see you maintaining your sense of humor. You are a terrific guy. Herb Maynard kicks in uh, with some helpful advice and says, you should have gotten in that car with the gold Rolex sub, meaning mine, because I, I lent it to Bruce so he could review it. You should have gotten in that car with the gold Rolex sub and headed out on the highway and never looked back, LOL. Well, actually, Herb, let me tell you, Bruce did give me a little bit <laughs> of a heart attack when I shipped him that watch because he texted me. Uh, I, I, I'm going to look and see if I can find it. I will drop it in right here if I can find it. But he texted me a picture of my watch on top of his car. <laughs> You're a jokester, Bruce Williams. Quite a jokester. And then uh, Michael kicks in helpfully uh, with a you know, word of reassurance for Bruce. And he says, ouch, not one of your best days, Bruce. Anyway, Bruce, we love you. And that was, that was an epic story. AIDLJ says, I had a chance a few years back to buy the Pepsi from an AD and I chose not to. Now I'm on a never ending wait list. The Pepsi GMT Rolex on the Jubilee bracelet, it is rated as one of the most impossible to get of all the steel sports watches. It's, it's probably right under the Panda Daytona and the Panda Daytona is right under the Blue Steel Skydweller. So tell me what you think guys, but I think that was, that's a regret I fully understand. By the way, make sure that you like and subscribe. Do it now. <laughs> My good friend Mackenzie kicked in with a single word regret. Squally. <laughs> I bet you there's a lot of people with the same regret. Herb Maynard says, selling my Eco Drive Nighthawk. It was my gateway watch. Well, you know, it almost doesn't matter, you know, how expensive or not expensive, if you sell something that's like your heart watch, something that touched you, especially something that got you started on the journey, guys, don't sell it. Take it from, take it from Herb. <laughs> you know, you will regret it. Don't sell it. Um, I still have my very first Rolex. It is a Rolex Date 34 millimeter. I'm going to drop it in right here. 
I bought it in 1987 and I wouldn't think about parting with it. It was the little watch that set me off on my journey. I never wear it because it's so little, but you know, it's mine and it was my first. Chris B said, I sold my Smurf a couple months before it got discontinued and I forgot to check new releases. Oy. The Smurf is a beautiful watch. It's white gold. Sure hope you didn't lose money on it because those are really hard to get. White gold, blue ceramic, bezel, and brilliant blue dial. So that's, that's parting with a watch that you can, you know, maybe find it very difficult to get again. They're more expensive now that they're discontinued. N. Hidori says, slamming it into the metal logo of my partner's purse. It left a huge ding in the lug. Can you imagine like dinging your watch on, on, a, on a lady's purse? That is pretty incredible. So, you know, what it says is ladies and watches don't mix. Keep your woman about eight feet away from you at all times if you're wearing something delicate, especially gold. Okay, Peter Chung Suk Kim says, I had a chance of buying a manual winding Rolex Daytona 6263. Okay, that is a four digit Daytona. Wow. He said, um, and the purchase price that I had on that would have been $20,000. Now, guys, I didn't look it up, but somebody tell me in the comments, what is that selling for now? I bet you it's 80, you know, at least. And uh, Peter said, but I bought stocks instead and I lost it all eventually. <laughs> so Peter apparently bought the wrong stocks. So uh, that's a woulda, shoulda, coulda bought that and didn't. Darn it. There's a few like that. Aldo Joshua says, I was offered a Batman. Here we go with a Batman again. Um, my friend the rancher, remember Stickergate where he got mad and left his Batman sitting on the counter because they started peeling the stickers off of it? Well, there's a lot of Batman regrets, Clyde. You are not alone. Aldo Joshua says, I was offered a Batman in 2016, but my AD, <laughs> and instead I bought the Hoyer 01 Skeleton. <laughs> Aldo, 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 what were you thinking, sir? What were you thinking? Well, Aldo got picked on a little bit for, for that regret. Christian Engen says, that's some dark SH, man. <laughs> Nazim Udin says, damn. And uh, BBAA says, I would never be able to recover from that. <laughs> I kind of see where they're coming from. Mr. Smith says that his biggest regret was buying a Rolex Hulk from my AD instead of spending the $10,000 on Bitcoin when Bitcoin was 3,400. So I guess he was kind of deciding between the, uh, the Hulk, you know, and the Bitcoin. And he went with the Hulk. He says, I now own a $150,000 Hulk. <laughs> well, guys, you know, watches are not investments. So, you know, now mind you, we've had a guy or two in here who bought stock instead of a Rolex and really regretted it. And of course, Mr. Smith, you've gone the other way around. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. I, I'm sure you're looking at that Bitcoin every day going, I could have been a contender. Truman Burbank, he says, I could have bought any number of steel sports from Patek, AP, and Rolex 10 years ago. Well, you know, we all could if we had the money, um, but it seemed risky and expensive and I didn't always have the money. But if you did, Truman, <laughs> you know, I'm sure you're looking at them now. Now that they've discontinued that Patek Nautilus, and what was it? It was a $40,000 MSRP. Now they're like 80, 90, 100 grand. You know, you could have funded a beautiful retirement with a few of those. Antonio Letera says, selling a 16520 at a substantial loss. That's a huge regret, Antonio. That is a steel Daytona with the Zenith movement. And those are selling now. Um, a quick check of Chrono, you know, just depending on condition, box papers, that kind of thing. Those things are selling for $30,000, but definitely well into the $50,000 range also. And um, so they've like quadrupled in, in price. So selling something like that at a loss is, is even harder than selling that Daytona at a loss that I did. I feel you on this, buddy. I, I made a sort of a similar mistake. John Henschel says, I was offered a Rolex Skydweller with the blue dial. That is the single hardest to get Rolex, I am told, back in 2019 at retail and didn't buy it. Oh, dear God. Well, retail on that watch is about 14000 and I think on the gray market. You know, I haven't checked lately, but the last time I did, they were, you know, they were deep into the 20s, probably $30,000 by now. Tell me in the comments if you know. Evan H, man, he gives me a long list of, of personal regrets. Evan, after I read this, you're going to need therapy. I'm going to need therapy. And all the punters are going to need therapy. So 
Now, he says, in the mid-90s, I passed on a Submariner 5513. <laughs> okay, a four-digit reference Daytona, or any four-digit reference Rolex is, is very good and, and extremely rare. I mean, they're so vintage that you have to be very careful about buying them so you don't accidentally buy one that has been molested or damaged or Franken-parted. You know, you do have to be careful. But nonetheless, he said it had the 369 Explorer dial and it was offered to me for the paltry sum of $25,000. That watch currently sells at big auctions for $150,000 to $200,000 now. So that was item number one on Evan's list. Item number two, so and this is also bad. Evan, geez, this is nasty. He says, I sold my inherited Rolex 6298 Oyster Perpetual with Everest dial. Dad purchased it new in London right after the 1953 summit of Mount Everest. I sold it like an idiot to fund a new Submariner. Not worth a lot of money, but the sentimental value is something that's irreplaceable. Damn idiot for those two bonehead screw-ups. There are other regrets, but to this day, those two are especially painful. Evan, I feel for you on this one, man. I, I really do. And I, I'm sure your father will forgive you for this much quicker than you will forgive yourself. But guys, let Evan's pain be a lesson to you. Never, never, never. If, if your husband, wife, father, mother, grandparent, if you get a, an inherited watch, you can't sell it. It doesn't matter the monetized value of it. You can never sell it. And I think maybe the only exception that I would give to that is if it's something that's going to sell for like trust fund money. So if you inherited a watch, you know, and you're down on your luck and that watch is worth 900,000 to 1.2 million dollars, I'm sure your grandfather would rather that you sell it, you know, versus living in a cold water apartment, okay? But otherwise, you can't sell an inherited watch. Just don't do it. Dad, you know that cheap citizen that you wear? I'm going to sell it. Or you could take it with you either way. William Rizzo has a single word, <laughs> regret, Invicta. I know a few people have that regret. Emerson Chai says, looking to pick up a watch three and a half years ago, Rolex AD had a Hulk and a Batman on the shelf for sale. And instead of picking up any of those two, I went to the Hublot boutique across the mall hallway and picked up a Big Bang for the price of those two Rolexes combined. I was never happy with the Hublot and three years later I sold it for half of what I paid for it bitter lesson learned. Yeah, because those Rolexes would be way, would be worth like double what you paid and the Hublot wound up worth half. Lester Love Watches said, number one, buying a Hoyer Carrera Caliber 11 at the top of the curve probably lost a thousand dollars. It's a cool looking watch, so I understand why you bought it. I like it also, but um, I was really afraid to, yeah, I was afraid to pull the trigger on that one and you're telling me why. Mr. Perpetual says, in 2014, I had the choice to get either the Submariner 116610LN or LV, and I picked the black dial LN. So he had the choice between the black Submariner, which is a fantastic watch, or the Hulk, which back in 2014 was a, um, was a, uh, or was it the Hulk in 2014 or was it the Kermit? Guys, I don't know when the Hulk came out. Let me know. In, in 14, I think it was the Hulk. I think the Kermit was over by then. Either of those is painful to not have bought, though. What do you think? Michael Markey said, Confession, I sold my 116610LN, that's the black ceramic Submariner. I sold it in 2019 for what I bought for it in 2015 to put towards an engagement ring. Although I never loved the watch as much as I thought I should, it would be nice to have it today. And now it's definitely more expensive than when you bought it and sold it. I love my wife, but I cringe when I think about selling that sub. Well, you know, look what you got out of the deal. You got a wife that you love. I think you have to let that one go, Michael. Jose B., I was offered a gold Daytona with green dial for $21,000 a year ago. Wow, because that's like a $40,000, $50,000 watch. That's like the most popular gold Daytona. You can't get that one. Stupid me didn't buy it. Then I found out it had recently skyrocketed. Called the next day and he had sold it an hour after I left for 23000 Still hitting my head against anything I find every time I see one of those. Well, Jose, I don't know what kind of company you're keeping, but I haven't seen one of those in the wild ever. They're really rare. That one is going to sting. Our last one, um, All in Her Movements, says, Every watch I sell is a mistake. 
I missed the Milgauss I sold, even though I thought I didn't connect with it. The Speedmaster Trilogy. I kind of want that one back, too. I took a loss on both of these, and I will pay more to rebuy them because I am a lunatic. Nothing sane about this hobby. And this is a perfect stopping point for this video. There is nothing sane about this hobby. We are not well. We are ill. He sold Rolex Steel Sports at a loss and now wants to rebuy. I got to tell you, I've done it. <laughs> That is a story for another time. People, please like this video, subscribe to my channel. Let's do this again soon. If you have a horror story, markgoldberg8 at gmail.com. I'll do another video later telling more of these terrible tales of woe. This is Goldberg. Peace out. Paint the sky your favorite color.